It's the Celebrity Master Chef Finals. Dillian, we're meant to be a team here, right? <laughs> so I'm encouraging you. Oh, perfect. Oh! The president of the government is waiting for us. OK. Now, four become three. As they fight for the chance to cook for five of the country's best chefs under the watchful eye of legendary MasterChef The Professionals judge, Monica Galletti. It feels good to be in the final four and soon to be in the final three. Winning's got to be a reality now. We can all cook good, we can all cook bad. Just about today, getting it right. There's no prizes for going out fourth. I get my head down, I'm just going to try and plate one of the best pieces of food I've ever done in my life. I'm just really going to smash it. I'm going to smash it like I'm mad at it. All four of them now are beginning to dream of lifting the trophy. This is a big day on MasterChef. You have achieved well beyond our expectations, but we don't want you to stop. Today, give us something exceptional, please. We've asked you to create a dish inspired by a place that you love. We've only got three places in the next round, and that means that one of you will be going home. Ladies and gentlemen, one hour and 15 minutes, one extraordinary plate of food. Let's cook. Vicky, lots of fun, lots of energy. John, she soaks up information, really learns and learns quickly. When it comes to her own food, there's always a lovely sense of pride and a little bit of a special touch. You'd think I'd be comfortable and confident, right? <laughs> You'd be wrong. I can't remember confidence. I can't remember comfort. All I know is this world of nerves and pain and sweat and you. Vicky, what are you making for us that's going to secure you a place in the final three? I am doing a dish that is a homage to my home, Newcastle. So I am making fillet steak, pan haggerty, a Geordie version of potato dauphin was, roasted baby carrots and a brown ale jus. Tell me why this dish? I live predominantly in London now, but I miss home. I miss me mum and I miss me family. And um, I like who I am when I go back up north. What bits that you've learned along the way are going into this dish. The first ever dish I cooked for years was a fillet steak. If you remember, it bled into the mash. I've been practising since, uh, learning how to rest it, learning how to sear it properly, and I'm keen to impress you and not make the same mistakes again. Good luck. Thank you. Fillet of beef, no fat whatsoever. That means it can dry out. It's got to be crispy on the outside, lots and lots of seasoning. The sauce on the side is made from brown ale and stock. It should be really smoky and delicious. When she gets that pan agate out, she's going to be able to cut it or shape it. Otherwise, it won't look particularly smart. Everywhere, then. Greg loves style and he loves technique. He likes it to be challenging. I can guarantee from Greg we are going to get fine dining. I'm like a lad from Bletchley and Milton Keynes. I've not really ever been to many fine dining restaurants. But I'm now trying to cook as if I'm in a fine dining restaurant. The change is monumental. Greg, what are you making, please? I'm making a lamb rump with sweetbreads, so an artichoke puree, uh, wild mushrooms and some parsnip in there. What is the place that this dish is celebrating? This has two meanings for me, really. So, 
I ate something similar to this in the Alps with my family recently uh, and absolutely loved it. And the Alps for me are my the favourite place in the world to go. I love skiing, I love being in the, the mountains. But equally, whenever I cook lamb, it makes me laugh because it was the first thing I cooked for Susie to try and impress her. Susie's your wife? Yes. <laughs> Little did I know she hated lamb. She pretended she didn't. She scraped the lamb into her handbag with one of my dogs trying to desperately get into the handbag. Didn't tell me for four years that that's what she had done. Piece of lamb. He's rending it in a cold pan, so he knows what he's up to. He's just going to make sure that he's cooked all the way through, still pink, still lovely and juicy, and it's had enough time to rest. Um, quite stressful. There's a lot going on. It's uh, the sweetbreads. They sort of cook very, very quickly, so I'm very conscious to make sure I get those right. Do you know how to do them? You cooked them before? No. Really? Oh, Greg, what are you like? You know I like a challenge. I've gone from elation to deep concern. There's just 30 minutes to go. Neil Ruddick has proved himself to be a man who loves to feed people but also loves flavour. Whether it be that big pasta bake in the first round or a chicken Kiev as moist you like with beautiful garlic butter running through it, he's always put a smile on our faces. My strategy moving forward is to cook better than the other three. Quite simple. Neil, what are you making for us, please? I'm making streaky bacon and chicken log, I suppose it's called. Palatine? Maybe, with, with like mozzarella cheese, uh, basil and sun-dried tomato filling. What's the inspiration for this dish? Exmouth. St Mary's Bay Exmouth. I'm going back to the 70s. <laughs> Must be 20 of us used to go to Exmouth and used to have the same caravan every year. We used to go to this pub down the road, and that's the first time I see meat with something in it. Neil's dish, he's got a ton of stuff to juggle. If that bacon's not wrapped around that chicken properly, it's going to open up, and that means all the juice will come out, the chicken will go dry, and our bacon will be soggy. Are you proud of that? First time I've ever had a go at it. You pleased with that? <laughs> Couldn't be happier. When I start this competition, <laughs> I wouldn't even attempt it. Don't worry about that. <laughs> love I'm it. loving life. Love it, love it. Dillian has survived this competition by cooking the food that he himself loves to eat. But funny enough, for a man who doesn't eat desserts, his desserts have been sublime throughout the competition. Be it a souffle, or whether it be a bit of banana mousse inside of a white chocolate banana, it's been exemplary. I'm like a wine. As time's gone by, I got better and better, more flavoursome. What are you making for us? I'm making a um, meringue with tropical fruit and a lemon and, and passion fruit jelly and some toasted eels and nuts and coconut. Where is the inspiration for this dish? Well, it's the sound from the Caribbean, the tropical fruit, the mango, the papaya, it hit with coconut and stuff. Why are you doing a dessert? I want to challenge myself, challenge my creativity and stuff like that. Dillian is trying more cookery technique than he's attempted so far in the competition. On the bottom, a beautiful light meringue. On top of that, mango, pawpaw, pineapple, coconut and a lemon and passion fruit curd and a passion fruit jelly. John, that's a lot of work for Dillian. Pressure's on. With all that work that Dillian's given himself to do, he's now struggling with that meringue. It's, it's, not, it's not done enough. It's not sticking into it. That meringue's still whipping. It hasn't been cooked yet. Meringue's got to be cooked. You have six minutes left. Oh! That little six minute call time snuck up on us a bit, I'm not gonna lie. You got it, mate. You're gonna have to work fast. So we've gotta get this plated up quick, quick, quick. Okay.
final touches. Dillian, what's left, please? Just finishing my garnish, mate. I'm ready for rock. Is that it? Yeah. Right. Quick, quick, quick. Zest that lime now. Now, 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 now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your time is up. Stop. Stop. Don't make me come over there to you, Dillian. That looks fantastic. Please, your heart, be pleased. I did taste nice. Neil, could we see your chicken, please? Inspired by his childhood holidays in Exmouth, Neil has cooked bacon wrapped chicken stuffed with mozzarella and sun dried tomatoes. Saffron potato fondants topped with crispy chicken skin, savoy cabbage, roast vine tomatoes, sweet corn, and a Spanish sweet paprika and pepper sauce. You've got some great flavours in there, Neil. I mean, if there's one thing you know how to do, it's flavour. I love the sweetness of that sun-dried tomato against the saltiness of the bacon. That's great. You do get saffron flavour on your nicely cooked potato. Lovely, salty, crispy chicken skin. That's a treat. I like your sauce that you've brought back from Tenerife. I like that. The chicken is a bit dry. Mm. The chicken itself is going dry because the parcel opened mm. up. Love the potatoes. Love the chicken skin, love your sauce. It would have been nice to have that chicken itself a bit moister. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's the best I could have done. I didn't walk away when I first cooked it, thinking that's it, I've messed it up. I walked away very, very happy. And the judges are 80% good, 20% bad. So fingers crossed that 80% is good enough to get me through. Vicky's cooked an ode to her hometown of Newcastle. Fillet steak served with pan haggerty and roasted baby carrots finished with a brown ale jus. It's a very simple plate, but I can't argue with delicious. There is no arguing with delicious, is there? Your fillet beef is perfect. Lovely soft pink in the middle. Your pan haggerty, strong, it's lovely. The sauce has got this good brown bitterness of beer, <laughs> which is really good. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. No, thank you. Vicky, it's brilliant. <laughs> Get in! <laughs> Your sauce is ace. Almost a toffee, creaminess, coffee flavour, the background because of the beer. I'm really pleased for you. I know this dish means a lot to you. You can taste that, and it's really great to see you succeed. Good on you. Thank you very much, lads. I'm, I'm obviously, like, proud as punch. I think I wanted to show Greg and John today just how proud I am to be Jory. And I'm so pleased I did. Can you imagine if it was rubbish? <laughs> I'd be, like, bored. <laughs> Crying, just sitting in Sunderland, <laughs> hoping to get back in. <laughs> Greg's dish is inspired by family holidays in the Alps. Roast rump of lamb, served with Jerusalem artichoke puree, pan fried sweetbreads, roasted parsnips, wild mushrooms, and a lamb jus. I really love that lamb rump. The top of it, the fat has been rendered, it's nice and crispy. Love the earthiness of that artichoke puree because it's really creamy. It's really, really good. The sweetbreads need to be cooked more. They're very soft in the middle, almost like a paste. Your flavours are superb. The cooking of your lamb and the making of the sauce and the puree is fantastic. So much to admire on there, but the sweetbreads are a problem.
Oh, emotionally drained, knackered. I feel better now I've heard their comments than I did just before I walked up, because I'll be honest, I thought I'd absolutely blown it. Dillian's Caribbean-inspired dessert is a meringue topped with passion fruit jelly, lemon curd, mango, papaya, raspberries, pineapple, toasted coconut and hazelnut, and topped with lime zest. The jelly with the passion fruit is fantastic, and I love the passion fruit pulp across the top, because that's really sharp and quite sour. There's a lovely richness coming from the lime rind and the sharpness of lemon coming from that curd. But that meringue underneath is just egg white with sugar in it and it hasn't been cooked enough. It's become very wet and very watery. So much work in there. Well-made jellies, lovely curd, beautiful array of tropical fruits, but it sits on the meringue that isn't cooked. I got everything perfect I got from the meringue. When I tried to lift it with the pan, it didn't lift properly, but it is what it is. So much ambition from these four, so much. All four of them really pushing it, pushing it so hard, actually, the errors started to creep in. Well, there was one dish in here that didn't have any mistakes. That's Vicky. The piece of beef was perfectly cooked without any blood running on the plate. That sauce was rich and delicious and had a beautiful sheen across the top. The pan had seen flavoured with lots and lots of cheese and salty bacon, and it was delicious. Vicky today wanted to celebrate Newcastle, the place of her birth, her home. And I think she did it today with all flags flying. So we agree, Vicky's got herself a place in the final three. No argument, no contest. Greg's dish was ambitious, and I was really excited about the sweetbread on Greg's plate, and unfortunately, it wasn't cooked enough. Sweetbread aside, I thought that Greg's plate was sublime. Dillian's flavours are absolutely lovely all different levels of juiciness and sweetness, well-made jelly, really nice sharp curd, and a meringue that didn't work. The flavours you can't complain about, but it all sat upon meringue which wasn't cooked. It's easy to see where Neil's strengths are, and that's in conjuring up flavour. The biggest problem for Neil was his chicken was overcooked. Tough one, everything else in the plate was good. Crispy chicken skin, nice sauce. Can you forgive that mistake, dried out chicken? I feel that anyone could go and I think it's sitting home now. I think everyone's getting a bit more quiet, getting a bit more fidgety because we do want to stay here. They know what they're looking for, so let's see what happens, you know. I can only do my best and that's it. I'm keen to see it all the way through to the end. You don't want to go home without at least having a shot at the final. We always knew this was going to be difficult. We always knew we would lose one of them at this stage. Right. Decision time, Mr Wallace. This cook-off was for a place in the final three. Great standard. Sorry to see one of you go. Really am. the contestant leaving us. It's Dillian. <laughs> Who's gonna bully you now? <laughs> Dillian, thank you very much for all your hard work. You've been amazing, thank you. Well done, mate. Well done, Dillian. I don't know what I got for. They knew what they was looking for in the final three, and I'm, I'm, I'm not it, so that's cool. I had fun, it was a good laugh, and I, I cooked some stuff. I even cooked for a president. I'll do it all over again.
You are our final three. Three! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I've gone all the way now. I was going to say over the moon, but that's such a football cliche that I'm over the moon. <laughs> to make the final of MasterChef, it's massive. I'm buzzing like an old fridge, and I'm in the MasterChef final of 2019. What an absolute buzz. <laughs> I'm so happy. You now have one more challenge before the final. That is Chef's Table, and you are going to be working with an incredible chef. Someone who forged their career in the white heat of some amazing kitchens and is an incredibly tough taskmaster. This year's Celebrity MasterChef Chef's Table will be mentored by one of the country's most influential culinary talents, MasterChef The Professionals judge, Monica Galletti. I'm going to be working very closely with these three contestants, eyes on everything, not going to miss a beat. New Zealander Monica's culinary influences are rooted in her classical French training and Samoan heritage. In Samoan culture, girls are taught to cook at a very young age. For me, I love the fact that, you know, being in the kitchen was, was where all the excitement and, and, and the fun happened. I just found my niche and I knew exactly what I was going to do forever. Monica honed her craft working for 12 years under mentor Michelle Roux Jr. at the two Michelin starred Le Gavroche. In 2017, she opened her own restaurant, named after her mother, Mary. It was recently voted in the top 10 at the National Restaurant Awards. The style of food here is a combination of everything that I've done in the last 25 years. I'm from the Pacific Islands, so every now and then we get some dishes that I've sort of put a twist on. And at the back of that, you know, is my classic French training as well. I think this is an amazing opportunity for our three finalists. They will learn from her. I've rarely seen anybody with the same passion and dedication as you get from Monica. Hello, hiya. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hello. You're All right, Chef. Yeah. Oh, I'm Big, I'm Big Razor. Oh, my God. Call me Neil. Hi, how are you? Oh, Wait, hold on, Monica. Hi, Chef. Hi, how are you? You're all right, Greg? Right. 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 Great. How are you? Excited, Good. nervous, I'm a bit yeah. scared of you, seeing you on telly. I'm really nervous to have you here, but I'm also excited for you. I've invited some of the top chefs in my industry to taste your cooking today. So the pressure is on, so do your best. We've got a lot of work to do, so we've got to get going. Okay, okay. Follow Let's me. Go. After you. Cheers, man. I'm terrified. I've woken up terrified. I've met Monica, I'm more terrified. I think you scratch the surface and we're all just like quivering pails of nerves. I think we're trying to hide it. What phases me is uh, getting the technique right. My presentation's not the best. Neil will be in charge of Monica's signature starter, a pumpkin and mascarpone agnolotti pasta dish served with an emulsion made from wild mushrooms and marmite. I love the excitement of when my guests have had it, you know, and they're like, oh, well, normally I don't like Marmite, but I love this. You know, that as a chef is, is like music to my ears. What's agnolotti? Agnolotti is a filled pasta parcel. Have okay. you made pasta before? I've made pasta before, yeah. Awesome. Well, if you get that right, uh, the rest of it should, once. should be fine. Once. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> <Made it> once. <laughs> this dish is about making sure everything is ready and you need to finish last minute. The emulsion is made from a mixture of wild mushrooms, including pied bleu. So just toss the pan a little bit. It's about controlling the heat. Giroles and trompettes. So you've got to cook according to the thickness and, and how quick uh, the mushrooms are. Yep. Here is our marmite stock, OK? And this is about making the emulsion, OK? So don't go too much. You can always add to it. Chefs love butter. Just a little bit. <laughs> and you see, as it's reducing, the butter is emulsifying, changing colour, but also the thickness of the sauce. Yeah. Okay, it's coming together. Look at that. 
Beautiful. Once cooked, the pumpkin-filled agnolotti are mixed with the emulsion and roasted pumpkin cubes. So, Reza, you'll be roasting the pumpkin, preparing the mushrooms, making your pasta from scratch, everything. So now we're going to plate. So you want first a little bit of these mushrooms in the bowl. Because my presentation hasn't been the best over the, this competition. But that's something that can be learned. Yeah. We've got here some parsley oil. You'll yep. be making this as well. OK. Oh. So to finish it off, you've got some pickled pumpkin. This is a little sort of surprise you're not expecting. It's very delicate. I struggle with these big hands with these tongs. You'll be right. And that's your dish done. That looks gorgeous. It smells gorgeous. Think you can do that? Of course I can. I love your attitude. <laughs> I'm so in love with you. It's very interesting. It's, it's going to be tough. And this dish, Marmite, is the key flavour. But it, this Marmite is from New Zealand. It's very different to, to the British Marmite. It's much darker and a bit sweeter. So I'm hoping that they're going to taste it and not use it too much because it can be overpowering. Vicky is in charge of a Pacific-inspired main course, a lemongrass butter poached lobster tail served with a peanut sauce chili, carrots, and a coconut lobster bisque. Are you sure that's just one course, Mon? Absolutely, darling. These are flavours that I was brought up with. And I think it's a sort of a mix of European style of, of cookery, but with the flavours that, that I absolutely love. This one, the key thing is getting the lobster cooking correct. Have you prepared lobster before? No, never. Have you eaten lobster before? I feel like the closest I've ever come is a prawn. Yeah, the lobsters, the shells are much thicker. You need to get them out and keep the tail and, and the claws intact. Carefully removed whole lobster tail is poached in a lemongrass and butter sauce for exactly two minutes. If this boils, with this lobster in it, it's going to overcook within minutes and it becomes very tough. OK. okay so I've turned it right down. So while that's poaching, you're going to quickly deep fry the claw. So this is very small, so it's only going to take a minute or so to cook. The cooking of the lobster is really important. It can't be overcooked because it's like rubber. It's got to be just under that it just melts. Next, purple and yellow heritage carrots are poached separately. The colours will run right. into the yellow carrots, so it's very important that when you heat them, yeah. you've got to do it separately. Right. They're topped with a peanut and coconut crumble. It's dead trouble with this one, isn't it? All the coconut and the peanuts and the carrots. Vicky will also have to make a peanut sauce and a coconut and lobster bisque, as well as heat the pak choy. So we've got the balls in the air here. Oh, Mark. yes. Oh, yes, darling. Yeah. So we're going to take your lobster tail out. Oh, he looks lovely. So we're pretty much ready to assemble. So this is your peanut sauce. I think I'm very particular about how my plates are presented, but I don't know any chef that isn't. Oh, that is lovely. It has to look perfect before these plates leave the kitchen. Very fishy. So you've got your pak choy, you've got your claw on the side there. Oh, God, Monica, it looks so good. I'm going to spill that. OK, I've got a big day, haven't I? You've got a big day. I'm very nervous about the dish. It feels like there's a lot of different elements, and most of them I've not only not seen before, but not cooked with. There's a lot of unknown territory lies ahead. <sighs> Come with me. Before tackling the delicate job of extracting cooked lobster meat from the tail and claws... What the hell is that? Oh! Vicky begins by separating the parts needed for the bisque. Oh, I'm just really fighting against all of me. Oh! Oh! I'm sort of my comfort zone. 
Greg will be responsible for a dessert called Hokey Pokey. Hokey Pokey is, is one of the childhood ice creams in, in New Zealand that I grew up just loving. It's got honeycomb running through the, the vanilla ice cream. And that's what makes uh, Hokey Pokey. The ice cream served on a baked chocolate crema and a sable breton biscuit. It's garnished with milk chocolate ganache, lemonade gel, aerated chocolate and a tempered chocolate disc. There's a lot to this dessert. It's all about making sure every separate part and component is ready before you start serving. OK. okay? So temperatures, you know, things are going to be set, things are going to be, the ice cream's got to be cold. But uh, I have faith, we'll get there together. OK. OK? okay good. First thing, we need to, a little bit of caramel on the bottom of the plate. OK, and that's just to hold the biscuits in place. This whole dessert was, was born from my favourite chocolate biscuits uh, as a child in New Zealand, which is called a toffee pop. And it had a, a biscuit, caramel, and then coated in chocolate. I really hope that they're going to manage it all, because if they do, this dessert will be a knockout way to finish this meal. So this is your strength, so I'm, I'm guessing, working in, in the pastry department. This is my first time on the show, I think, working on pastry. <laughs> The Breton biscuit is decorated with spires of light milk chocolate mousse, lemonade gel, honeycomb. Wow, this looks amazing already. And aerated chocolate. So this is wow. the ice cream. And I've just put the extra honeycomb on top. Do it too soon when the ice cream's just been churned, you'll find the honeycomb will, will melt. The setting of your ice cream is, is very important. You know, you want to make sure it's not going to melt by the time. Because you're doing six plates. This is one. <laughs> OK. Take your chocolate deco. To add a bit more pressure, you're going to serve your dessert, and then you need to shave this. And this is 100% uh, chocolate from Salmoa. I mean, that looks easy, right? Yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. A bit of chocolate, caramel, and ice yeah, cream. I mean, it's nothing, is it? A bit of honeycomb. Walk in the park. Yeah, I mean, I've done all of that before. There's a hell of a lot of pressure. There's no chance to second guess this or just blag it. It has to be right. The first element Greg needs to make is the ganache. He begins by mixing milk chocolate, cream, gelatin, and glucose. This is very technical. Whoever's doing desserts, you know, needs to be so organized. There's about eight, nine different elements to this one dessert. All the different components need to be ready before you can start assembling. Because there's certain things that I don't really fully understand because it's rare that I've worked in this sort of area. This level of dessert, very new to me. The celebrities have just two and a half hours before service. Is this your Marmite stuff? That's my Marmite stuff. Lovely colour. Nice. With his Marmite stock ready, Neil is free to make the pasta dough for the agnolotti. I've never seen yeast extract in pasta before. Good shout. Before carefully preparing pumpkin for the pasta filling and garnish. I've got all my pumpkin, my pumpkin squares, and then my pumpkin little sort of oblong. OK, what else have we got left to do? I've done my pasta, I've done my pumpkin. I'll try pickling liquid next. You're breezing this. I love it. On the main, Vicky is roasting the lobster shells to extract maximum flavour for her bisque. Next, she must carefully prise the lobster tails and claws from their shells. Ah! Oh! It's very good. She's got tail to the face. Take off the top. Yeah, come on, friend. Lobster is a, is a beautiful, expensive ingredient. What is it? What is your problem? So it has to be prepared, you know, with a lot of care. Just stuck to something. Can't damage the lobster at all. Come on. Look, look, like it's just clinging by a thread. If you've not prepared a lobster before, this will be tricky. What's wrong with you? Ha! There we go. Oh, look at that, mate. I'll be... Someone be proud of me. Aha! <laughs> yes, ah. 
cooking on gas now. Vicky Patterson, lobster slayer. Across the kitchen, Greg's moved on to make the baked chocolate crema, a set creamy dark chocolate mousse. Sorry, I know this is taking a while. I'm so determined just to get it perfect. Oh, 51, see the wrap in there? It was 49. Oh, no, 50. Look, gone back down. Goodness me, everything's completely and utterly precise. Every single one is 50 grams. But the thing is, you're trying to be so incredibly precise with it. At times, it sort of shoots out a bit fast, everything else. While the chocolate crema bakes for exactly 12 minutes, Greg moves on to make the base for his vanilla ice cream, which will have honeycomb added just before service. There's an awful lot to do. Now, I've, I've just ticked off the second part, and there's still about another seven to go. I really like the way that Greg is, is working. He's methodical, he's being really cautious in the pastry. Just taking it step by step, you know, and making sure everything is done properly. With just an hour's cooking time left, Neil has moved on to the Agnolotti filling, a mix of roasted pumpkin and mascarpone. It's about that much, mascarpone through it. You're just going to stir that through, that's it. So don't overwork it, you just want to nicely mix it through. The more you work it, the softer it's going to become. Let's have a taste. Huh? Mm. Beautiful, Chef. Mm. Filling is very important, it can't be too runny. Otherwise, the little pockets uh, won't hold together. I've never done anything delicate like this. I'm really enjoying it. I don't like the preparation and the chopping. I think I'm a bit of a pasta chef, and I moved on. Doing really great, but uh, I'm going to give you a hand because we Thank need you. a bit of a push, OK? Thank you. Today's guests include some of the country's leading chefs. Right now, they'll be shaking in their boots at the prospect of serving Monica's food to five chefs who, amongst them, have got five Michelin stars. A massive ask. So I've eaten Monica's food several times. I know the quality that she produces. For them to recreate that is going to be a massive challenge. For me, they've had several weeks. Hopefully, everything that they've learned will come together. I think a little bit of self-confidence goes a long way. It's five plates of perfect food that they all have to be perfect. If something's missing, we'll see that immediately. I'm incredibly excited about this menu. I think there is a lot of curveballs on here. Some really kind of high ingredients that they've got to pay a lot of attention to detail. I don't think she's held back. She's made sure it's, uh, it's not an easy menu to do, is it? No, no it looks not delicious. Guys, listen up. The chefs have started arriving upstairs, OK? Yes, chef. There's just half an hour until service. Greg's vanilla ice cream is set, but he now needs to make the all-important hokey pokey, which is made by adding baking powder to a light caramel. Wow, look at that. That's it, in a tray. Spread it out, spread it out. Be very careful, very hot. Yeah, you don't want any melted sugar on you, do you? OK. Wow, this it. is amazing. <laughs> That's fantastic. Amazing. OK, so we're going to set that on the side to cool. First time in my life, just made honeycomb. But he still hasn't made his dessert base, the sable breton, or French butter cookies. Never made anything like this before. This way. <laughs> You're gonna break the bowl. <laughs> I didn't even think. I didn't even think. When I put the spoon in, a bit of it broke off. But right, we'll start again, easy. He now needs to make a new dough from scratch. OK, here we go. Speed, speed, speed. Try to rush a little bit, because I was like, right, we need to hurry up. As soon as I rush, it goes wrong. Greg is not the only one falling behind. Although her lobster is prepped, Vicky still has to finish her bisque. 
Oh, it smells lovely. And complete the seven other garnishes that go with her dish. This is an incredibly long, wiggly carrot. I am actually quite relaxed. I wonder if it's all the tropical flavours in the food. Yeah, but I'm just getting holiday vibes. Vicky just needs to get her head down and just get on with it. Watch out. <laughs> She's got none it in the face. The garnish isn't finished, uh, the peanut sauce isn't finished. She has a lot left to do, so she really needs to start motoring now. Aha! Look at me! There we go. And I like Monica a lot, and I kind of want to impress her. I just hope I do her justice. Right, guys, you have 15 minutes. So we're doing six plates each. Make sure everything is ready before we start. So right. let's keep going, guys. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. With moments until service, Greg's second batch of Sable Breton are finally ready to bake. Neil's finished his pasta. 31, that's six and one extra. <laughs> one extra. But still needs to roast off the pumpkin seeds and make a parsley oil to garnish his dishes. Around the dining table today are Monica's peers. And that means that the food today has to be exceptional. It's Monica's food. It's Monica's reputation. There's no way in the world she's going to let it out of that kitchen unless it's absolutely perfect. Monica looks so scary because she just gets so disappointed when chefs get it wrong. Her standards are sky high. Pass her in. As quick as you can, because the others are already cooking once they hit the water, all right? To start, we've got pumpkin field agnolotti, mixed mushrooms, and marmite emulsion. With agnolotti, there's a lot to get right. Pasta dough itself, rolling it thin enough, making sure that they don't pop when they're poached. The old double-handed razor, they call me, chef. Cooking the mushrooms, cooking the agnolotti so they're perfect. The emulsion, it's a massive ask. It is for us as professional chefs, but for them doing it, it's a really big ask. Let's go. It smells amazing. Let's go, let's go. I'm not the quickest. It's the marmite that confuses me. This is something that you're going to need a real great palate to be able to not overpower the pumpkin with the marmite and to make sure it's soft and beautiful. Come on, Reza. Food is cooling down. The longer I'm you going. take, the colder the food gets. I'm getting this, chef. Come on, Neil. It's a beautiful I'm dish. There. It's looking good. Don't drown it. Don't drown it. Easy, tiger. Go in the leaves. Oh, sexy one. Give it a wipe. Service. Thank you, sir. That's it. You're all right. That was brilliant. <laughs> That's the best day I've had, that one. That was brilliant. I really enjoyed okay. that. You that did was well. Excellent. You did really well. I wasn't flustered. I was uh, in control of my emotions. I didn't control my plating. I think they're enjoying it. If, there's, if they don't enjoy it, it's ain't wrong. It smells delicious. It looks spot on. They all look very similar. Neil's starter is pumpkin and mascarpone filled agnolotti in a mushroom and marmite emulsion served with mixed wild mushrooms, roasted pumpkin cubes and seeds, pickled pumpkin, and finished with a parsley oil. I think this is an extremely tasty plate of food. Very well balanced. I, I love the fact that you get that lovely burst of the raviolis with beautiful texture on them. There's really accomplished cooking here. The mushrooms have kept their meatiness, their integrity. It's absolutely spot on. Mm. It's super thin pasta, it's not overcooked. I can taste pumpkin, and I think adding the small pieces of pickled pumpkin is just genius because it yeah. kind of lifts all the flavors. I get the marmite a little bit of it. I think that's where the salt is coming through, but I think it's complemented the dish rather than taken away. I wouldn't know if Monica cooked that for me or a contestant. It was an absolute joy to eat. The pasta is perfect, and the filling is smooth and creamy. 
Using a yeast extract gives that wonderful umami flavour, and that's why it's so fantastic. I think well executed by Neil, well seasoned by Neil. Hello, I'm Blue. How are you? Good. Good. Honestly, that was just a delicious plate of food. You know, so many different elements that could go wrong. Yeah. But you perfected every single element, and it all came together in just a Moorish plate of food. And that's all you can ask. That dish is exactly how Monica would have served it to me. So you should be very proud of yourself. I am proud of myself. Well, well done. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Some of the chefs I've eaten here, and they said that was at Monica's standard. Bill Shelby should be proud of himself and absolutely nailed it, so. It's good to be the king. Vicky's up next, but still has garnishes of candied chilies and pickled carrots to finish. There's my carrots. And coconut lobster claws to deep fry. All right, Vicky. You're up next. OK. OK. Let's get the lobster claws nice and crispy. Oh. Oh! Come on. That's oh. nice. It's lovely. Oh, you come, friend? We can drop we... a couple more in. You OK? Yeah, fine. Are you all right? Yeah, no, I'm good. Let's be careful. Yeah, so... So for main course, we have butter poached lobster, crispy knuckle, peanut sauce. Oh, yeah, that's lovely now. Heritage carrots and coconut. That's a lot of ingredients on one plate to get right. Careful, because everything else got a lot of salt. Gentle, gentle, gentle. Yeah. Poaching lobster, for me, that's a real art form. Oh my gosh, look how good they look. Yeah. So to get five portions of that perfect, that's going to be a difficult task today. OK, we're going to start plating. Peanut sauce first. Come on, lady. Spread, 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 spread. Sexy! Let's go. Next two plates, miss. There's so many different elements, and it's perfecting every single element and balancing it all together, which I think will be the most challenging thing about this dish. Woo woo! Stay focused, darling. Love that dish. So as part of this dish, there's going to be the crispy knuckle. If you were a nugget, where would you want to go? Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Not on the floor. That's where you don't want to go. Great. We're going to cut one small. We're going to have to, aren't we? No. So just make this sure... This one's really big. OK, so Should cut that one him? in half. Yeah. No, no, no. Where do you want it, Mon? Go here. Yep. OK. I'll be looking out for the base to flavour the base. That's it. Go. Service, yes, please. Sir. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think I was more stressed than, 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 than you were. My goodness. Well done. Great oh, job, Mrs. Thanks, Monica. Thank you for everything. It's all right. That was beautiful. It was a really nice time. <laughs> Do you know why everyone says you're so scary? I think you're really nice. Obviously, it's Monica's reputation is steak, so you oh, do want to do your best, and you do want to produce a plate of lovely food that's up to her standard. Visually, looks very impressive. There's a lot going on here. Vicky's dish is lemongrass and butter poached lobster tail served with peanut sauce, deep fried lobster claw, heritage carrots, pak choy, candied chili, and a lobster and coconut bisque. The lobster is absolutely perfect. In my eyes, that is a dish that's cooked by a professional chef. It's that good. I think the bisque is absolutely stunning. There's a little bit of spice in there, but it hasn't overpowered the sauce in any way. This dish is a great balance of lightness and depth of flavour. That crispy claw as well with the coconut is absolutely delicious. The dish gave you such a journey through all the different textures and flavours, but really well balanced. And I think whoever's cooked it should be incredibly proud of themselves. Buttery soft lobsters. Everything is otherwise tropical, apart from the humble carrot that's got almost a starring role and works brilliantly. Good on Vicky. She's done a lot of work here. And what she would have learned is you can put quite different things together and make it work. Hello. How are you? Hi. Oh, come on. <laughs> Thanks, 
guys. <laughs> How was the lobster? That was a faultless plate of food. Honestly, a professional chef would find that challenging and you made it look simple. I really appreciate that. Thank you. That is just a work of art and it tasted divine and delicious. So congratulations and well done. Thank you so much, guys, for being so lovely. Well done, thank you. I'm blown away. I've just been given some of the best praise I've ever had. Honestly, I just feel great. Tired, but great. Does it smell delicious? Finally, it's Greg's dessert. I'm sort of pushed for time. Got to crack on. I've got to make sure it's all right. He still has three elements of his dish to finish, including the chocolate decorations, a caramel, and aerated chocolate. Yeah, I think that's about enough. Absolutely thrilled to be seeing each element of the dish coming together now. It's not been plated yet, so it might all go completely pear-shaped, but who knows? For dessert, hokey pokey with manjari crimmer, salted toffee, honeycomb ice cream, sounds really interesting and also kind of looks like it's something from Monica's heritage. Get off my finger. Get off my finger. Let's do this hokey pokey. Come on, let's turn it around. You always make me laugh at these moments. Ignore them, stay focused. They've got to make a sablé biscuit. That's not an easy thing to do. You want that sandy texture because this, this dish is all about texture. You're doing really good. Stay focused. <laughs> nice. I'm just going to pick the paste up a little bit. Sexy. Making ice cream can be a challenge. Making honeycomb can be a challenge. So combining the two, they've got their work cut out. Make sure you've got lots of honeycomb on it. That's it. Come fast now. Fast, fast, fast. Assembling it all, it's going to be a big ask for them today. Decoration, okay. decoration. Got his hat on, let's go! Service, please. He did amazing. amazing. Oh, well oh, done. Thank you so much. I'm so proud, you did so well. Oh. That was intense, though, wasn't it? Oh, huge. I'm exhausted. I worked so blimmin' hard to get every aspect of that right, and never in my life would I believe I could create something that looked as amazing as that did. Greg's dessert is hokey pokey, vanilla and honeycomb ice cream, and baked chocolate crema on a sable breton biscuit base, served with milk chocolate ganache, lemonade gel, aerated chocolate, tempered chocolate disc, and finished with grated Samoan dark chocolate. Oh, my God. That's so good. All the textures. Oh, wow. Absolutely delicious. Crunchy, soft, sweet, incredibly well executed. There's huge notes of saltiness in the caramel. There's that amazing honeycomb. There's incredible sort of cacao flavours, a little bit of bitterness there. It's I, I just outstanding. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better. Yeah. It takes a skilled pastry chef years to learn techniques like that. I've been involved in a few MasterChef dinners. I honestly believe this is the best dinner I've had, and that is absolutely an outstanding dessert. It's beautiful and it's delicious. The work in there is off the scale. Huge amounts of work, lots of different textures, lots of different flavours. I think Greg should be very, very proud of his execution of that dish. Bravo. Wow, Greg, unbelievable. It was for us. I've seen amazing pastry chefs go down hard on it, on, <laughs> on a dish much simpler than that, so well done. Thank you, that's massive to hear. Thank you so much. Congrats, Greg. Like, sensational dessert. 
real finesse, and that's something that's, I think, hard to teach. For you to pick that up so quickly uh, was really impressive. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chefs that have Michelin stars to turn around and say that it was good, that's really, really blown me away. I'm in shock. I'm genuinely in shock. I, I can't believe the response I just had. So I'm a bit, I don't know, yeah, I didn't expect it at all. Today has been extraordinary. Monica has really pushed our three celebs, and all three of them took it on with real gusto. I am so happy. <laughs> they made me really proud. Razor on the starters, he was tasting the food as he worked. I thought he did a great plate of food. It looked lovely. The further you go into this competition, the better chance you've got, and the more confident you get. Today, I think I've got a great chance to win it now. Vicky, once she's got her head down and focused, this girl really sent out beautiful food. I think she did a great job. The cooking of the lobster was spot on. I feel really pleased with myself. I've had a fantastic day. I'd go as far as to say I've had the best day of the competition so far. Greg was the calmest, yet his dish had so much details. At the end, you could see the stress was there, but he just stayed so focused. A true athlete. All three of us, I think, are level pegging it as it currently stands. We just have to come with our A game and create, hopefully, something truly magical. And I think we're going to have a very exciting Master Chef final. One more cook off to go. Well Who's our champion going to be? Would you want to put money on who our champion is right now? I wouldn't. Next time, it's the Celebrity MasterChef final. As Greg, Vicky, and Neil go all out to take the title. Ah. <laughs> it's got style, it's got elegance, and it tastes fantastic. It's just divine. Our celebrity MasterChef champion is. <laughs> <laughs>